and when I woke up, I was like, what am All right, hey guys, it is Saturday afternoon. So far today, we've just been doing a whole bunch of like boring, random house stuff. Right now, Grant just went to, I think Lowe's or Home Depot, I can't remember, to return some of those garage organization things that we got and we ended up not using. I don't know if you watched that video where we worked on our garage. We made a lot of progress, but there were a couple of things that Grant ordered that we ended up not needing. So we'd had them for a very, very long time. Hopefully they take them back, but he just ran them over to the store and other than that we've just been doing a bunch of boring house stuff I've definitely gotten a renewed energy for working on the house I've gotten kind of complacent kind of a false feeling of content with my house just because our main living areas feel really good I've been slowly decorating kind of getting things the way I want them and there are definitely big things that we still need but we've really slowed down on like buying big piece of furniture and stuff like that just because we're starting IVF that is a huge huge expense and also with COVID just we're just slowing down on making big purchases like that if it's not something we really really need like this situation right here we want a new TV we know which TV we want we want that frame Samsung TV have you seen that TV it's definitely overpriced for what it is but I've wanted it for so 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 long and I think we agree that we both want it but it's a big expense that we don't need right now also this Ikea media thing that I've had for so many years so many years it's even slightly broken we definitely want to replace that a lot of things in the main living areas we also want to work on but it's nothing that we desperately need right now. So we've definitely slowed down on that kind of spending. Okay, I don't know how I got off on this topic. Basically, our plan for this weekend was to work on the house, try to tie up loose ends, get this house the way we want it. Because we're pretty happy with a lot of the areas, but mainly the upstairs, it, it needs a lot of work. A lot of things have just sat in corners and we can kind of overlook them very easily because we're not in those areas analyzing the way they look, but the house needs work. And partially some of this motivation comes because if you remember a few weeks ago, we went to an 18th birthday party and we saw some of Grant's family. And I learned later that Grant had told a bunch of people that everyone could come over in August to come see the house and kind of just like have a little get together. I mean, obviously it's all up in the air with COVID, with the spiking numbers in Texas. We want to do everything as safe as possible. So it's just an idea that got thrown out, but it has given me a little extra motivation to get back focused on working on the house, especially the upstairs, because there is a lot of work to be done. I will show you everything. We are gonna work on it this weekend, and I, I feel good about this. I feel like we're gonna make some major progress. I don't know why I can't be one of those people that just like can't sleep at night if their house isn't perfect. Like you hear people say things like this, like I was laying in bed and I just couldn't sleep because there was a spoon in my sink. You know, I, I well, I'm kind of thankful I'm not one of those people, but there's another part of me that's like, could I have gotten like a teaspoon of that in my personality? That That might be a little bit helpful. I definitely give myself a lot of slack. I give myself a lot of grace. A lot of people say that lately. I feel like it's almost overused at this point. Although I do love the meaning behind it, I feel like we all should give ourselves more grace, give ourselves more slack, and not be so hard on ourselves. I'm definitely not hard on myself at all when it comes to decorating and getting my house done, having everything perfect, because nothing in my house is perfect. Like even in these main living areas that I feel pretty good about, there's a lot that could be done. But I'm just generally content with just saying like, well, it'll happen when it happens, we'll see. And you know, that's fine with me. But when I can get a little kick of motivation, I will take it. So people potentially coming over in over a month that is motivation for me. So we're gonna be working on the house. Grant is all for it. And the first thing that I wanna do, the first thing I'm gonna show you is the guest room upstairs. Okay, rather than me just blabbing on and on and telling you what it's like, I'm just gonna show you. I have decided that any work that we do this weekend, obviously, 
I'm just gonna use what I have. We have a lot of extra decor, extra wall art, random pieces of furniture, and I'm just gonna try to work the puzzle pieces and try to make things fit so the house feels more done. And I don't even know what I mean by like more done. I guess just more decorated, more like I tried. I don't know. It's just, I'm not really looking to buy a bunch of stuff right now, but I want the house to feel a little bit more like moved in. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, here is the guest room in question. As you can see, this is my old bed from my old house, the bed that we used in our last house, the same bench, the same bedding, and the same furniture. This is actually furniture that I got from my parents. This was their furniture way back from the 70s, and I love it. I'm so glad we have a good place for it. Definitely a different vibe than the rest of the house, but I feel like all of this stuff fits together. I also have these two chairs here. You totally can't see them right now because somehow this has become the landing spot for all the extra bedding. So, so I need to find a home for all of that stuff. And then you'll actually be able to see these really cute chairs that I absolutely love that Georgetta gave me. I feel like they go with the whole kind of medium dark brown furniture. It's almost got kind of like a feminine, almost boho vintage vibe, not boho. I don't know what to call this room but it's a bunch of stuff that I already had. I already like, I don't really like this rug. I've had this rug for a very long time. I got it at Target a really long time ago. It's not my favorite, but I think it's better than nothing for now. Okay, over here you might have noticed I did make an attempt to kind of put some stuff out that I thought would go with this room. Clearly it needs a whole lot more styling. I definitely don't have a lot of confidence when it comes to shelf styling, tabletop styling, all of that, but I'm gonna do my best. We definitely have a lot of stuff to work with and I love this print. It's one of my favorite things. We used to have it above our bed except now over this bed, we have a teeny tiny, really awkward window. Honestly, I kind of hate this window and I hate that it has blinds on it, but I know it has to have blinds on it because it gets a lot of light. We're just gonna try to work around it and we're gonna hang this above this piece of furniture. But other than that, we definitely have a lot of room to get some stuff on the walls and kind of warm this room up, kind of make it look like a place you'd like to sleep if you were a guest. I don't know how inviting that is. <laughs> Probably not at all. Okay, now we're out in the hall. Obviously, this is a trouble spot. This used to be filled with boxes and I worked on it a whole bunch about a month ago and then I stalled out. It's a ton of extra wall art that I just didn't know where I wanted it yet. A lot of it I've had for a very long time. I'm sure some of it needs to be donated, but I definitely want to go through and use what I have. But for this room off the top of my head, I think we can try these two mirrors here. Oh look, there's Looney. <laughs> and then also probably this big flamingo. Y'all, if you've been watching my channel for a long, long time, you probably remember this flamingo. I've had her forever. What do you think about this? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, <laughs> bad idea. Oh wow, you're really gonna get a really good idea of what that will look like. I think maybe that could be cool. <laughs> Looks great, Leanne. All right, now we're gonna bring this guy in and I'm thinking here, I got two of these guys. All right, so try to picture it. These two mirrors up here. Also, this little lamp over here. I feel like it's far too small for this situation, but it's what I have and it's what I'd like to use. So I think I wanna spray paint it. I think I have the spray paint that will work. The only problem is that it has a super, super glossy finish and a ton of grooves, but I think it's worth a try because I don't think the black really works here. Just realized there's something in this huge box from Amazon that I have yet to open. I ordered it a while ago, but it just came yesterday. I haven't opened it up yet, but this could be good for the room. Luna's here to join in on the fun. It's a box within a box. I am so excited to see this. Hmm, what? Oh, it's real heavy. It's a plant. I don't know if you can tell yet. It's a fake plant. I think I saw that you can actually order real live plants on Amazon. This is not a real live plant. This is a super fake 
non-living plant. And y'all know, I love my real life, living, breathing, growing, multiplying plants. I love them so much, but I will never hold anything against a fake plant. I love a fake plant. I love a low maintenance little spot of green in the room. Like this guy back here, that's from Target. That's fake. I bought that actually for Grant. I ordered it for his apartment in LA because that place was pretty bleak and that plant was far too small for that apartment, but I tried. We've come a long way and we're a very happy family. What is this, a Sansevieria? I could be totally wrong about this. I think it's a uh, snake plant. There is definitely a more official name for this. I actually have a plant like this, but it's much, 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 much smaller. And it would probably take a really long time for me to grow it this big. There is a lot of light in that room, so I could totally afford to put a plant up there. I just have to really be on top of taking care of it since I don't go in that room all the time. Wow, I just got moss everywhere on the floor and I just vacuumed yesterday. <laughs> Oh well, how do we feel about this? It kind of got a little squished in transit, but that's to be expected. Okay, maybe I should get a little closer. Sorry, I have a little sugar-free candy in my mouth right now. Hopefully you can understand me, it's not distracting. There is wire through the whole leaf, but it stops here, here. And so this curve right here is not something I can easily, easily stretch out. I don't know, maybe from a distance we could be friends. Let's bring it upstairs. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay. So this is my snake plant and it's similar, but it's definitely not same, same. Like we've got some striping here, but it's definitely a brighter color, but it definitely has a lot more waves up top than I remembered, even though I see this thing every day. But that's not too far from natural, but it is much more compact. So I could definitely open it up a whole lot more. All right, let's go buddy. Yeah, this room also definitely needs some work. Aww, better times. These pictures are so cute. Okay, I went hunting around the house and in the loft space and I have a good group of little decor items, a few accessories. We've got candles, trays, wall hangings, a couple books, mirrors, obviously. This is our treasure from our honeymoon. If you didn't follow me back then when we got married, it's a clock and a lamp. We found it at an antique store in Hawaii when we were on our honeymoon. It is an absolute treasure to us, and I'm wondering if maybe it will work in here. It's just an idea. It's just up here just to see. Obviously, we have this art, the plant, a basket, a big hollow storage book, I guess. <laughs> it's supposed to look like a book, and just a bunch of little random things. I'm gonna be kind of styling this area, and obviously this area over here. Okay, so before I really start to get to work, let's take in a little before. I'm really acting like this is gonna be a huge transformation. Hopefully it is, but I don't wanna get my hopes up. This is the before room and it's time to get going. Okay, do you see? These chairs are actually really, really lovely. And they're comfortable. They're cool, they're comfortable, they're everything. I will never get rid of these chairs for as long as I live. They're definitely one of the best gifts I've ever received. Obviously, this is still a work in progress, but we got Grant back and he's got his tool bag. Tool time. <laughs> and he's gonna help me with hanging a couple of these things. I'm starting to doubt if I even really wanna hang this on the wall. I'm having a lot of doubts here, if you can't tell. We'll be back to this. How was the world out there? Ooh, busy. Really? Everybody's keeping their distance though. That's good, that's Everybody good. Their mask. You got the first one up. Is it level? It's 
well. Good job. And I just went over both of these mirrors with my e cloths and they are looking brand new. They were super, super dusty. Oh, and I found some other wall art. I mean, it's just everywhere. I, <laughs> if you've watched past home tours, apartment tours, you know, I have an allergy to wall space and I have so much wall art that I've accumulated and I still love a good deal of it. So I'm thinking this one could maybe be cool over here. All right, we've got these mirrors up and now it's time to do the flamingo. Ta -da! <laughs> I think it looks great. Looks like a little waiting room. All right, it's time for me to get back to my job over here. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that I could rearrange this for the rest of my life, but I'm just gonna stop myself. I feel like we're in a good place. I feel like this looks pretty good. I decided not to actually hang this and just leave it leaning. I like that look. This is probably the piece of it that I feel least sure about but grant was adamant that it needed to stay so i'm trusting him on that it does bring in the colors of the print and we love this print and i got these fake guys whenever i was redoing my studio my background for my videos and it definitely has that kind of 80s golden girls look and that definitely works in there. Does it work in here? That's what I'm unsure about. But overall, I feel like this looks good. Here's a little close up of everything going on. I definitely took inspiration from the way Georgetta styled it and I used a few of the same things that she did, but not everything. Okay, moving on to finish up the room. I've still got a bunch of stuff left. I'm definitely not gonna use it all. I need to do this side table nightstand thing. And looking closer at this, I don't know if you can tell on camera, there's this major flaw on this wood. There we go, now you can see it. I haven't dusted this one yet, so there's also a lot of dust, but this is actually me as a child being bad. <laughs> I can actually vividly remember when this happened. I can't remember how old I was. I was probably like eight, 10, I don't know. My parents actually had this furniture in our house, in their room growing up. Like I was having flashbacks as I was dusting because I used to dust this furniture growing up. That was one of my chores. I spilled polish remover on this thing and my mom had kind of like a tablecloth or like a doily kind of thing. It was the 90s. <laughs> and it covered a lot of the surface of this and I just flipped it back over. I was so scared and I knew I had messed up big time and I just flipped the fabric back over the stain and pretended like it never happened. Of course, my mom soon discovered it and I was in major trouble because I'm sure you can fix this and repair it and refinish it, but that would be a lot of work. <laughs> I would be so mad if my kid did that. And since I was that kind of child, I'm sure I'm gonna have that kind of child too. It's all gonna come back around to me. Okay, we're making a much needed pillowcase switch here and I'm done. It's way, way easier for me to feel confident about how I've styled an area if it's a lot smaller than that dresser. Maybe I should have started over here. And honestly, I'm now doubting if I even wanna try to spray paint this because I think using this black art it ties it in and maybe I don't even need to. I'm definitely still thinking about it, but for now, I like how this looks. Okay, don't mind the fact that I should have definitely remade the bed completely. We're gonna do a little bit of something on this bench, but not too much. I'm not trying to get crazy. All right, I'm done. I kept it super simple. I added some books and a tray, coasters. I think maybe in the future it would be nice to have a heavier, cozier, fluffier blanket folded on this side for a guest. And obviously if I actually had somebody coming to say, I could add 
I don't know, some things that maybe you'd like to give your guest when they're staying. I also added a little pillow up here. I don't know if it's perfect, but it's what I have. Overall, I'm feeling really, really good about the progress in this room. I think it looks nice. It's obviously super eclectic. I was just working with what I have. I would love to get a new rug. It's nothing urgent though. I feel like the camera never quite does it justice, but I think we're looking good. All right, what do we have here? Grant is mixing it up. Mixing it up. <laughs> this is actually leftover slow cooker chicken that I did on Tuesday or Wednesday this week. And we've just been eating it for lunch. Grant's been taking it to work and tonight we're having it for dinner. And it looks like we're also having some queso tonight. Mm -hmm. I think we're just gonna add this into the burritos because we can't have chips right now. Last time I made these, I actually made them in the vlog and I made a cheese sauce that goes on top, but this kind of queso with Velveeta and Rotel definitely will work just as well. You can bury me in queso when I die. Bury me in queso. <laughs> All right, and while Grant is working on that, I am gonna work on dessert. I'm gonna be making low carb donuts. If you didn't watch the vlog last weekend, you don't know about our unfortunate circumstances right now, we are switching to a low carb diet. We've been at it for about a week and a half at this point. It's not really that hard. We're not doing keto. It's not no carbs, it's just low carb. So day to day, I'm tracking what I'm eating. I'm using an app and generally I've been getting under 100 carbs, but my range is about 100 to 150 carbs. But we're just doing this to help our chances at IVF. We're starting IVF. I'm actually gonna get to stop my birth control tomorrow. I've been on birth control for a month. I've been on metformin for a month and this has been my prep month and I think next Friday I'm actually starting the shots actually I'm sure about that on Friday I'm starting the shots I'm nervous but I'm so excited I'm so ready to just get this going and from what we've read and from what we've heard from our doctor low carb can help your success with IVF and we want to do every little bit that we can to make this happen so we're going all in we're gonna make it happen we're going low carb but we have both been craving donuts pretty much since the day we went low carb. And Grant keeps taunting me with it. And generally, I'm the one that wants donuts. Really, that's something that I crave more than anything. Probably at least once a week, I'm like, I want a donut. I don't usually get a donut because it's out of the way or whatever, but we have both been wanting a donut and I found this recipe, so I'm gonna get started on this. Okay, I got most of my ingredients out, including my new donut pan. Grant found this on Amazon. I don't know why I never considered this being a possibility. Obviously, donut pans are a thing. They're just so funny to me because it looks like little tiny bunt cakes. But for the moment, I'm gonna put that on pause and take it back up after dinner because our burritos are ready. All right, this is looking really, really good. This is our dinner entertainment for the evening. I think it was a special from 1971 about Disney World. All right, I'm back. The burritos were delicious, dare I say, even better this time with the queso, the way that Grant did it. He also actually added jalapenos in, so it was even spicier, which was amazing. So if you watch that vlog where I did that recipe, <laughs> I'll link the recipe also if you're interested in it because it's super easy to make and it's really good. I would definitely suggest doing just your regular yummy queso recipe and skip the cheese sauce that they include in the recipe because that one's really good too, but regular queso is better in my opinion. Anyway, let's get back to the donuts. I've got all my ingredients ready and it says on the recipe that the, the prep time is only 15 minutes and the cook time is only 25 minutes, so we're about to have some donuts. <laughs> Something happened. 
Clearly, I overfilled the pan. In the directions, it said to fill the batter up three quarters of the way, and I thought that I was doing that, but I also really wanted to use all the batter, so I might have overfilled it a little. I mean, obviously, most of our donuts barely have holes here, but whatever, I'll take it. If it tastes like a donut, I'm okay with that. Though, what we're gonna do now is obviously let these guys cool, and this is a mixture of cinnamon and sucre and gold brown sugar. In the directions, it just said to use the monk fruit again, but I had this brown sugar that my little sister said is really good and she really likes to use it for baking. We recommended this and I already had it, so I wanted to try it because we're just gonna dip the donuts into this mixture. I also have this butter melted and we're gonna mix that in. Grant, my donuts have no holes. Your donuts don't need holes. They're just little tiny cakes without holes. Don't have time for holes. Can't wait, they smell so good. Cinnamon sugar. We got it going on today, girl. Donuts for dinner. Donuts for dinner, donuts in the morning, donuts at supper time. <laughs> I just realized I definitely did this step wrong. I mix my butter in with the sugar, but you're really supposed to paint the butter onto the donut and then dip it into the sugar. Kind of feel like there's no going back now, so we're just gonna, I don't know, try to make it work. Maybe I can just spread it. Wow. I grabbed some forks because this is probably messier than it should have been. Behold our holeless donuts. Grant is on the hunt for something for us to watch. Definitely has a donut feel. It's like a cake donut. I like a cake donut. I also love a glazed donut. I also love a donut with chocolate frosting or pink frosting and sprinkles, but this is pretty good. The one thing I will say, if you've never tried these kind of sweeteners, obviously it sounds like the perfect solution. If you need to be low carb, this sugar is perfect because it does taste like sugar. It does taste sweet and good and the brown sugar tastes like brown sugar and the powdered sugar tastes like powdered sugar. But there's a really weird thing that happens. There's what they call a cooling effect. So in your mouth, it feels not like peppermint. Like how would you describe it? It's just like a cool feeling in your mouth. Yeah, it's like cold air blowing on your tongue or something. Yeah, it's weird. It's not bad. It doesn't taste bad. It doesn't affect the taste but it is something that you notice with every single bite. And I hadn't tried monk fruit before, so I had high hopes that maybe it wouldn't have the cooling effect. Cause it, I don't know, it's not bad, it's but yeah, but it's just different. It's not like regular sugar. Whenever you just eat sugar, you never have that. Probably a lot of you that haven't tried this kind of sweetener have no idea what I'm talking about because it's hard to describe and you've, it, it's weird because it's cooling, but it's not minty. And probably the closest that you could get to the feeling is like minty. Like when you yeah. breathe in and you have something minty, it's like that cold. Anyway, that's a downside. That's a big downside with every kind of sweetener like this or every kind of sweetener like this that I've tried. If you tried one that doesn't have that, please let me know in the comments. But these are pretty good. I would say if you're doing keto, if you're doing low carb like us, these are pretty good. I made a lot of mistakes in this recipe, but it didn't end up really mattering in the end. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna bring you a little closer for a second because I'm realizing that I completely have not addressed something that is on my face. Let me see, I think this is super bright right now. My brows, I feel like I cannot into this day of the vlog without saying. I did something new to my brows. I feel like it's obvious. Maybe you've noticed, maybe you haven't, but I recorded it. It was a whole process and that video will be out on Thursday. So keep an eye out if you like these brows or if you don't like these brows. I've kind of been back and forth all day. I just did it yesterday and when I woke up, I was like, what are my brows doing? They look so crazy. And then I did my makeup and I felt better about it. So I've kind of been back and forth all day on whether I like my brows and what I did to them. <laughs> it was definitely experimental, but I just wanted to address that because it's on my face. Wow, they are large and in charge right now. Now we're gonna go and watch a movie. <laughs> 